Hey guys, Sean here from Tesla Family. I had my Tesla solar panels installed on June 26th of this year, and I want to share with you my first electric bill since installing my panels. The best part about it is I owe less than $10. All right, let's take a look at my July 2020 electric bill and compare it with my July 2019 electric bill back before I had solar panels. Alright guys, thanks for clicking on the video. If you're new to the channel, welcome to Tesla Family Channel. If you are a returning viewer, thanks again for watching our videos. We really appreciate it. We've gotten a lot of great feedback and a lot of views. Very popular here, our Tesla solar video series that we're doing on my solar panel installation. So before I move on to showing you my July 2020 electric bill, I wanted to start out with a little snip that I took from my electric provider's website here. You could see that they said the average monthly electric charges before going solar were around $150, and my average monthly electric charges since going solar are now down to just $10. That's awesome. That's $140 difference. Take a look at my video on how I paid for my solar panel system, and you can see that I've already got them paid off. And so anything coming back to me in my wallet is my solar panels paying me back. So here is about $140 a month, at least in the peak of summertime here. You can see this is July 2019 compared to July 2020. Okay, let's go here to my July 2020 bill. Pepco is my electric provider here in Maryland. So scrolling down, the bill issue date was July 28th of 2020. And my previous bill from June 2020 was $109.08. But my July bill here shows that now I only owe less than $10, which is awesome. I'll show you a breakdown of why I even owe any money at all uh, with solar. Some people may think that when you buy solar panels, you never have to pay an electric bill again, but there is a small charge. I'll show you here as I scroll down a little bit more. You can see here for uh, July 2020, the average daily temperature was around 82 degrees, and that was about the same as July 2019. Scrolling down a little further here, get to the details. So I do have a residential time metered plan. Basically, that means that my meter charges me for electricity that I use three times a day. On peak, intermediate peak, and off peak. On peak, the hours here you can see on the right are from noon to 8 p.m. And that's where I pay my highest rate. Basically, that's when the highest demand is on the electric grid. And then for intermediate peak, which runs from 8 a.m. to noon, and then from 8 p.m. to midnight, I pay a much lower cost for using electricity at that time. And actually, for off peak, it's the same cost as well, uh, which are the hours here. I'll scroll down real quick from midnight to 8 a.m. So taking a look at on-peak usage, this is an actual measurement from my meter. I uh, used 149 kilowatt hours here in July 2020. And then there is an on-peak excess generation, which is an estimate of 204 kilowatt hours. So because I produced more during the on-peak time than I used, over here on the right you can see I get a credit. So now I have a credit rolling forward of 55 kilowatt hours that I'm able to use in August. For intermediate peak, you can see it's 149 kilowatt hours, and they estimated 408. Still kind of scratching my head a little bit here on this one, on how the electric company estimated that I generated more than double of what I used in these intermediate hours, which are basically when the sun is just rising and when, when the sun is setting which is really not the peak generation of solar panels. So scrolling down here, my 179 usage subtracted from 408 in estimated excess leaves me with a 229 kilowatt hour balance. Same thing with off peak here, and this was really confusing to me how the utility can estimate that I generated 815 kilowatt hours of excess electricity. Now, off-peak hours also is 24 hours a day on the weekends as well, so that may answer part of my question, but still 815 kilowatt hours? That's more than what I used in an entire month. Anyways, I'll have a uh, excess generation going forward of 549. Total I used for kilowatt hours in July 2020, 594. 
All right, so I wanted to compare what my Tesla app calculated as my production through the period here. Remember that I had my Tesla solar panels installed on the 26th of June, but we didn't turn them on until really July 3rd was the first turn on day. So we ran them for about 20 days from July 3rd to July 23rd. But the billing period here that we were looking at for July 2020 is actually from June 23rd to to July 23rd. So there's about 10 days where we were still hooked up to drawing completely from the grid until we turned on our Tesla solar panels. Yeah, I pulled up my Tesla app here and I looked at the weekly views and then a few of the daily views here really to get a sense of what my uh, total home usage was, total solar energy produced, how much I drew from the grid and how much I pushed to the grid during the period. So my home usage was 628 kilowatt hours. My solar energy produced was 765 kilowatt hours. I drew from the grid 327 kilowatt hours and I pushed to the grid 465 kilowatt hours. So that's where I, where I don't really understand how the estimates from the uh, electric utility are so high. It really doesn't make sense that the utility is estimating that I uh, produced 1,427 kilowatt hours of excess when really, according to the Tesla app, I only produced 465. You know, if they're going to estimate high, I guess I'll take that for now and we'll see if that balances out. As far as the charges for the month, you can see there's a customer charge of 1725. So that's going to get you, if you have solar panels, if you're connected to the grid, you're going to have to pay some sort of customer charge. So 1725. Uh, and then they're hitting me with a uh, universal service charge of 32 cents and then there's this eight dollar energy wise rewards monthly credit that's great i'll take that a small amount of taxes that you have to pay and in the end here my total electric delivery charges was nine dollars and 93 cents and since i generated more than what i used i don't have any supply charges so all i owe is nine dollars and 93 cents that is awesome hopefully i can keep that rolling here month after month with my new solar panels Let's turn the clock back here an entire year to July 2019, well before I had my solar panels installed. And you can see my bill here, it was $149.69. Wow, it's nearly $140 difference from July 2019 to July 2020. That's a huge savings. Really loving these panels because I'm seeing these numbers. You know, looking at this $10 bill or less than $10 bill is really making me happy I made the decision to go solar. So again, if you're considering solar, make the move now because uh, especially with the federal tax credit dropping from 26% to 22%, next year you're going to be missing out on some of that federal tax credit. So I would try to make the move now and see if you can get your solar panel system installed here in 2020. Take a look at my video. Although it has older pricing on it, all the new pricing is reflected uh, at tesla.com but take a look at my ordering tesla solar panel video turning it back even a month earlier 107 dollars and 48 cents you can see i had triple digit bills here um at least over the summertime of 2019. scrolling down a little further at this time a year ago i had this rpiv plan which is residential service with plug-in and vehicle charging pre-solar panels that was definitely helpful with charging my model 3 uh, because I could pay a really cheap price for electricity and I'll show you down here a little lower um, because I actually did have to pay for supply this time uh, what that cost was here. So July 2019 I used 211 kilowatt hours of on-peak usage. Intermediate peak 362 in 2019. Going to off-peak I used 452 mainly charging my Model 3 here. So just doing a quick comparison here uh, 211 for on peak in 2019 and 204 here in 2020 but you got to keep in mind that some of the supply that I needed went from my panels straight into my home so that wouldn't be measured on the meter same thing for intermediate peak 362 used in July 2019 but only 179 measured at the meter again more solar from my panels going straight into my home but off peaks probably pretty close 266 here in July 2020 versus 452 so uh, but also um, we need to talk about how with COVID-19 now I'm not driving hardly so I'm not charging nearly as much here in July 2020 versus uh, driving a few times a week here back in July 2019 total usage 1025 kilowatt hours 
Uh, it was pretty hot for a few days back in July 2019, so they did have these peak energy savings credit days. So on July 19th, they uh, basically gave us about a 5 kilowatt hour reduction for uh, not using as much electricity, trying to conserve electricity. So here's the breakdown of the costs here. Customer charge of $7.80. An energy charge of 1,025 kilowatt hours at six cents per kilowatt hour, 66.51. A little bit of a franchise tax, and then here's the energy reward, uh, the universal service charge, energy-wise rewards of minus eight dollars. Then a Maryland environmental service charge, pretty small. Empower Maryland charge, a lot of little nickel and dimes here. Uh, gross taxes here, dollar 69, and then here energy tax of 11.59 so the total electric delivery charges of $88.05 so now going into supply charges this is where I can show you the breakdown of what the costs were for on peak intermediate peak off peak I was basically paying about 10.6 cents per kilowatt hour for on peak energy and but look at this for intermediate and off peak only 2 cents per kilowatt hour so very advantageous for me to charge my model 3 um, in the off peak or intermediate peak hours but my total electric supply charges in July 2019 were $61.64, bringing the total bill to $149.69. And we can see here a few times I marked here on the 25th, 29th, 30th of June, 5th, 6th, 8th, 14th, 18th of July. These are the higher uh, areas here on the chart where I use more electricity charging my Model 3. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you here was uh, something that's pretty cool, but I won't know until next April, is that at the end of the year here, it says from Pepco that if your account had in a crude carryover of kilowatt hours at the time of your April meter reading, a refund check will be issued if the credit amount is greater than or equal to $25. If less than $25, the credit will be applied on your next bill. I imagine I'll have a greater than $25 credit. Um, I just don't know how much. I don't really know how much Pepco is paying out per kilowatt hour as we move to April. And we'll also have to see how my production numbers are looking in uh, in winter time. Maybe it will end up eating away at a lot of my credit over the winter and I won't end up with a lot in the spring. We'll just have to see. I'm planning on doing seasonal videos here uh, for the uh, summer, fall, winter, and spring to sh give you an idea of what my solar panel system is producing. So, all right guys, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully it provided you with some information. And if you're uh, looking to add solar panels to your house or, or if you recently had solar panels installed, hopefully uh, taking a look at uh, my electric bill here uh, will give you a sense of what you can expect when you get your first electric bill in the mail. Hopefully it's as good as mine. Like I said, can't beat less than $10 here per month. All right guys, thanks for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Tesla Family Channel here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos as well. Also follow us on Twitter at Tesla Family Chan. Use my referral code to buy a new Tesla and you will get 1,000 free supercharging miles. Or if you use my referral code to buy Tesla solar roof or solar panels, You'll get a $100 reward after system activation.